All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for being here. It's always really intimidating going last because you know that everyone's just kind of like looking at their watch, being like, okay, how long is she going to talk? So I've got six minutes, hopefully, last time I timed it. So I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, and with that, I'd like to really just start with actually a dedication. Um, I dedicate this um, thesis to actually four people in particular. The first two, my parents, Jen and Carla, who couldn't be here, but they're going to be watching this on my video, hopefully, and really appreciating all my hard work. Um, and I really appreciate everything that they've done. Um, of course, I could not have done this thesis without my wonderful boyfriend, Sam Farnsworth, um, who I would like to make note that he did actually keep track of how many times I cried throughout the entire writing of my thesis, but he did not let me quit, and I really appreciate that. And last but not least, I could not have done this without the one and only Dr. Carrie Martin, who told me that I could watch TV for a thesis, and that was awesome. So <laughs> you four are pretty much just my lifesavers throughout this whole process, and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. There's a war going on in Hollywood. I don't know if you know this. It's not quite a war like the one in a galaxy far, far away, nor is it a war like the one that DC Comics thinks they can beat Marvel at. But as, Ta as Tabitha, I'm sure, can tell you, Marvel wins every time. It just, there's no contest. No, this war is much more subtle. It's so subtle, in fact, that you might not even know it's going on. And I'm talking about a battle of the sexes. Now. Feminism and Hollywood feminists, they have a couple major weapons that they tend to use in their shows and in their films. The first one is the strong female lead. This supposedly supports female empowerment. The second weapon that feminists use is homosexual relationship. This supposedly promotes gender equality, doesn't it? And the third weapon is true love. True love trumps the sanctity of marriage. Now, with this in mind, I would like to point you to a particular woman, the focus of my thesis, Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes is the general who is leading the feminist charge right now. Um, she is the creator, producer, and writer of five female empowering dramas. Um, her shows are basically, they were the perfect subject for which to turn my lens for this thesis. Um, but however, I did remove private practice and the catch from my actual study because private practice ended in 2013 and the catch actually just premiered um, this past March. So with that in mind, my thesis of Shondaland became Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and How to Get Away with Murder, which was collectively known as TGIT. Now to simplify my research and to keep myself from having to analyze 16 seasons of television, I decided that I would just look at the first seasons of each of these shows, which ended up being 31 episodes of content. Um, I looked to determine whether or not these shows were more patriarchal in their nature or if they were actually more feminist, like media tends to build them up to be. Now what's interesting about feminism is that there's no concise definition of feminism. Depending on who you talk to, which expert you ask, they're going to give you a different opinion. And that's what I came across in a lot of my lit review. It was all, you know, this is what I think feminism is and this is what, so this is what I'm going to evaluate this television content on. So what was interesting is that I decided that because I have a very evangelical conservative background, my view of feminism is very different than the secular world. And I wanted to take my opinion out of it as best I could. So with that in mind, I decided to employ the help of Molly Haskell, who is a renowned feminist film critic. Um, and from her book, From Reverence to Rape, The Treatment of Women in the Movies, this is where I created essentially my roadmap. I came up with 125 patriarchal and feminist themes. And these are the themes that I looked for in the 31 episodes of content that I evaluated. Now, here's the interesting thing. Once I got my roadmap all established, all I had to do was watch, observe, write, and count the number of themes in each of these shows. I swear I never thought I would write sex so many times in one paper. And so Dr. Martin I, and Dr. Hark, I really apologize. Like, that was a lot. It was intense. Um, so I have seen these shows before. Grey's Anatomy will always be one of my all-time favorite shows. So I had an idea what to come up with when I came up with these three hypotheses. The first one is that Grey's Anatomy will contain more feminist themes than patriarchal. The second is that Scandal will contain slightly more feminist themes than patriarchal, but it's still a little bit more on the patriarchal side. And then the hypothesis number three is that How to Get Away with Murder will contain more patriarchal themes than feminist. Now this is what's interesting about reading my results. My results for the first nine episodes of Grey's Anatomy, feminism beat out the patriarchy 38 to, uh, 33 to 8. 
the seven episodes of Scandal, the ratio was tied 15 to 15. Now, and then in the 15 episodes of How to Get Away with Murder, feminism lost to the patriarchy 36 to 54. I said that my results surprised me, but I got two out of the three correct, so what gives? The truth is, is the, the nature of Grey's Anatomy and how to get away with murder on the gravity of the scale, the difference between 33 and 8, and then 54 and 36. 33 to 8, that's about 80%. 36 to 54, that's about 60% um, or so. And now what was interesting is that Grey's Anatomy, Shonda Rhimes' first show, you would think that she's going to play it safe. She's going to go on more of like the patriarchal Hollywood side of things, and then eventually, wham, hit you with the full-on um, feminism. That's not what happened. She started off really strong. She started off with this great female empowering sh show, Grey's Anatomy. Feminism beat it out by a lot. And then throughout her shows, they kind of got darker and darker. They became actually more patriarchal, which actually um, kind of went against the, the strong feminist ground that she had started off on. So with that in mind, was Shondaland more feminist or patriarchal? It's really for you to decide in your own mind and what your own opinion of feminism is. But I found that it's, it's not. Shonda Land, as much as we like to think that she's, you know, making these grand strides for women in Hollywood, it's kind of just so-so. It's really not as great as we like to give her credit for. So what happened? You know, why are these shows revered as, feminiz, as feminine, uh, excuse me, feminism so much? I like to go back to my weapons. The strong female lead, the homosexual relationship, and true love. These weapons, I think, are actually Trojan horses. They make us think that what we're watching empowers women or supports gender equality, but the truth is, is that they're just distractions that kind of keep us from digging deeper and asking tougher questions. Now, my study challenged the assumption that just because there's a female lead or true love, that that makes a show feminism-esque in its content. And I really hope that my study just challenges you to think critically about the content that you watch. I believe that feminism is a worthy cause to fight for, and I love seeing that there are strides in Hollywood that women are making all the time, especially in the past you know, five years or so. But I also don't think that Hollywood can pretend to empower women when they strip women of their clothes and say it's taking control of their sexuality. And I don't think Hollywood can shout that their gender equality is the, what they're going for when they put down men in order to promote women. And I also don't think that they can deprecate marriage for the sake of true love. This isn't feminism. And if we aren't careful, we will continue to let Hollywood redefine the way we live. Thank you.